Hello, hello everyone. Thanks for joining us for another Ask Here live studio session. My name is Joan and my pronouns are she and her and I'm a student recruitment officer at Memorial University. Today with us, we have Karen Balmer, Annie Corrigan, and Erin Lee joining us from the School of Music. So they're here to answer all of your questions about their undergraduate programs. But before I get started, I just have a couple of housekeeping items to mention. So this session's being recorded. Therefore, if you're participating, you are consenting to that. Your mics are muted and your cameras are turned off. So it is going to look like you're the only participant here, but you're not. Um, there are others joining us today and you're here with our panelists as well. But if you do have a question, of course, please use the Q&A function to all panelists so that we all can see your questions coming in there. It's the main reason we're here today. So that's really important that you use that feature to get those in. And today's focus, of course, is the School of Music. So we're going to try and keep our questions related to that. And if you do have a question we don't get to, don't worry. We do have staff on here who are going to be answering you directly in the chat or following up with you in an email afterwards. So to get us started, I'm going to ask if each of you folks can tell me a little bit about yourselves and your roles within the School of Music. The first person I have here on my screen is Annie. So if you could start us off. Hi, everyone. Hi. My name is Annie Corrigan. My pronouns are she, her. I am the academic program administrator for the School of Music, which means I run the audition cycle. And I help first year students get acclimated to life at MUN. I also teach the oboe. All right, thanks for joining us, Annie. Next, I have Erin. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Erin Lee, and I'm a second year student in the Bachelors of Music and the Business Administration degree. So that's a new joint program that started up last year. And as well, I'm a voice major, and I'm here to give a little bit of a perspective from a student, uh, music student. So, yeah. Great. Glad to have you, Erin. And Karen? Hello, I'm Karen Bulmer. My pronouns are she and her. I am the Associate Dean for Teaching and Learning at the School of Music, and I am also the instructor of low brass. I'm a tuba player, but I teach tuba, trombone, and euphonium, and a bunch of other courses as well, pedagogy, and um, lots of other things. Great. So to get us started, just a reminder, folks, questions can go in the Q&A to all panelists if you're wanting to submit one. We really want to get to, to those questions today. So the first one we had that came in is about the different major areas within the School of Music. So I'm wondering if Karen, I think that one can go to you. Absolutely. So we have a bunch of different programs in the School of Music, undergraduate programs. So you can major in composition or musicologies, which includes music history and ethnomusicology. You can major in performance. You can also do a joint major in performance and musicologies or a major in performance and a minor in composition. We also have a general studies program, um, which is a program that kind of um, allows you, it allows the most flexibility out of any of our programs. So if none of the things really grab you fully and you want you kind of want to sample, um, the general studies program is excellent for that. And there's also an option to do a minor in a discipline other than music with the general studies program. We have a new minor in jazz studies. And as Aaron was saying, we also have Canada's first university level uh, joint degree in music and business. So this is a five year program. And after five years, you get two degrees, a bachelor of music and a bachelor of business administration. Wow, so those students are really real random, right? Hey? <laughs> That's right. It's a great program. That's awesome. All right, our next question is for Erin. So students wondering, what does the day of a life of a student look like in your program? Yeah, so my program is a little bit different because, of course, I'm in business. But first, I'll just touch on um, a daily life in the music student. So 
Um, every day you will go into the School of Music or we're online and you have your applied class. So that's the class that you have with your specialized instrument. And then there's also theory classes. So everyone has to take theory and everyone has to take history. And then once you get those foundation courses out of the way, you can start to take more specialized courses. And like Dr. Bellmer was just saying, once you decide on your major, that will decipher what uh, other types of courses you take. But um, what's unique about music school, I find is um, our music school in particular, is that we're a smaller faculty. So we differ from other faculties um, on campus and we're all very close knit and everyone kind of knows each other so there's lots of people to help you out so you kind of go through the day alongside other students and then i think that's a really unique experience that we're really lucky to have the opportunity here at um, memorial great so it's a super tight-knit kind of everybody knows everyone within the school hey yes definitely oh that's great that's an awesome community spirit then mm -hmm. um so our next question is about the audition process within the School of Music. Annie, I'm wondering if you could weigh in on that for me. Gladly. So our auditions every year are made up of three primary components. Your audition on your primary instrument. So for Erin, her primary instrument is voice. For someone who would want to study the oboe, your primary instrument would be the oboe. You can go to our website and see the different audition requirements for the different instrument areas. Uh, in addition to your repertoire, it also includes things like scales and arpeggios. Then there's a theory assessment. So music theory is how do you read music? How do you understand chords? And it's also when you hear music, can you write it down? And can you recognize what you're hearing? So the theory assessment gives us an idea of the skills that you have coming in, but it also gives you an idea of the sorts of stuff you would cover at music school. Then you also have a sight singing assessment, which is just what it sounds like. You get a melody in front of you and you sing it. And so again, this is uh, so we can know the skills that you have coming in, but also so you get an idea of what music school would be all about. This year, I'm sure you can understand is a very special year. So all auditioning students will submit audition videos the deadlines are on our website. You should turn them in by February 26th. And then our theory assessments and our sight singing assessment will happen on February 27th. So please go to the website so you can see those dates in particular. And just to add to that, Annie, if anybody here is in grade 10 or 11, they're going to be wondering, where are those uh, usual places that, that you can audition? Typically, in hopefully normal times, will we get back to that? We hold live auditions in St. John's, typically the end of February or early March. We're also in Toronto and Halifax in mid-February. So you can either fly to one of those cities, come to St. John's, or every year we always do also accept audition videos from students who just can't get here. Awesome, okay, thanks for that. All right, so our next question is uh, student-based again. So Erin, we're wondering how, with such a busy degree program that you have, you managed to balance your work-life scenario. So where the question is, how do you balance it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, so um, music students are definitely known for being quite busy. Um, my first thing I, to figure out last year was when I like to practice because you want to figure that out right that off right off the bat and then um, in terms of keeping a good time management and trying to get all of your coursework done I would say um, create a schedule a study schedule as well as your practice schedule and also definitely rely on your friends because like I said the school is so close-knit you are able to make those connections where you can work on assignments and you can collaborate with your peers. And I think that's really unique to what we have because we all are in such close proximity together. So definitely um, working in that way, but then also uh, just creating balance because there are lots of really awesome activities and 
clubs and things like that on campus. So getting involved in those, but finding that healthy balance to seeing what you can handle is definitely going to be key for being a music student. And then again, with the business program, that's a whole other level, um, but it is definitely possible and um, I'm really enjoying it thus far. <laughs> Awesome. I think that's some really good advice. Hey. Um, so in terms of the next question, students wondering what kind of performance opportunities there could be in the School of Music. So I'm wondering, Karen, would you be able to weigh in on that for me? Absolutely. So again, I'm going to I'll focus on on normal times before times we have. Um, a number of different ensembles at the School of Music. So we have two choirs, we have a chamber orchestra, we have a wind ensemble, we have a jazz ensemble, we have a percussion ensemble, and we even have a gamelan ensemble. And a gamelan is sort of a set of instruments, percussion type instrument, gongs, and so forth. So um, every year students are placed in at least one ensemble according to their instrument. Um, but often students play in more than one ensemble or they'll play in the wind ensemble and also sing in the choir and you get to perform with these groups. There are also opportunities to perform on your major instrument in what we call master class. So every week each instrument group meets together for an hour and we all use that time a little bit differently, all the different instructors, but we all devote at least some of that time to student performances. So you get to take some of your solo music that you're working on and perform it in front of this small group of people who play your instrument. It's a really wonderful chance to practice performing um, and get great feedback from your peers and from your instructor. And if you're in the performance program, you do recitals as part of your degree. Uh, and many studios do studio recitals. I think that pretty much covers it. Yeah, for sure. And just to follow up on that, is there any opportunity for paid performances within the faculty as well or paid work experience for students? Yeah, well, for, for performing there, there is there. I can't think Annie will jump in if she if I'm missing anything um, of, of paid performance opportunities within the school, but in the community, there often are. So um, we we do have a a partnership with the Newfoundland Symphony Orchestra and a number of our, our students play in that and they get, I think, a tuition voucher is that, yeah, for, for that work. Um, many of our students play in, we have a very active musical theater scene, so many of our students get jobs in pit bands and, and things like that. Awesome. And Annie, did you have any other, other things to weigh in on that on employment, student employment within the School of Music? Sure. So there's a program at Memorial, the Memorial University Career Experience Program. I believe I'm getting that right. It's abbreviated MUSEP. You could be a MUSEP student working in a variety of different capacities at the school. You could work with our production team to help pull off our concerts and recitals. You could learn audio engineering. You could learn how to be a backstage manager. You could work with our professors on their research. You could work with our theory professors to get some teaching experience if that's interests you. And we also have community programs where we work with people in the community, kids, and bringing music to them, and they come into our building during normal times. You could get a job as a MUSEP student assisting in one of our community programs. So lots of employment opportunities. Wow, you really do have a lot going on in the School of Music. I'm learning a lot here today. <laughs> um, so another question just came in and it's about how do you start making friends when you originally come in to the university? Erin, uh, would you be able to take that one? Yes, definitely. So um, I realized that lots of people do come in from outside of Newfoundland. Um, although there are lots of people from Newfoundland that go here, there's lots that come from outside. So one thing that I want to make clear is that absolutely everybody in the School of Music is just a friend that you haven't met yet. Like I have not met anyone who has not been approachable or who has not been willing to lend a helping hand. It's truly beautiful. So yes, of course, right now during these different times, it might be a little bit harder. I mean, I, 
I have a girl who just joined my studio from Ontario and we had to like really reach out to her, but I guarantee you, even if we are in this situation um, in the coming year, people will be reaching out for you and looking for you to try to make sure you're feeling welcome. But then again, if we are in person, um, even just walking through the doors, and if you walk in the hallway, I, I guarantee you will meet people. But um, different ways and opportunities are through joining clubs and societies. Uh, the student, the school of music actually has the student music society, which is kind of like a little uh, mini council. So if that's um, up your alley, that's a really cool thing to get involved with. Um, but you will meet people in your classes, and um, it's I it, it does seem a little bit intimidating, but once you get in there, I promise you it will be a wonderful experience with future friends all around you. <laughs> Seems like it was really easy to engage in the environment that you folks created over there for sure. Absolutely. Awesome. So our next question is actually about scholarship opportunities. So a student's wondering what kind of opportunities do you have for first year students who are applying and then beyond that as well. Um, Karen, would you like to speak to that one? I feel like this might be more Annie's. I feel like Annie's going to have better, <laughs> better information here. Sure. Annie, for sure. Yeah, I'd love to speak about it. This is a very easy question to answer because for incoming students in the Bachelor of Music or Joint Degrees Music and Business Program, you are automatically considered for the wealth of scholarship opportunities at the School of Music automatically considered. You do not need to apply. And this is above and beyond the entrance scholarships that Memorial University offers incoming students as a whole. So as an incoming student coming into the Bachelor of Music program, automatically considered for scholarships. Wow, that's awesome. And if the student's really wondering what those might look like and, and what that process kind of looks like, is there any information about the scholarships that are available on your website or? You bet. Go to the home page and on the, the left hand bar, the left hand bar, you'll see scholarships. You can click that and get a better idea of all the opportunities that we have. Perfect. All right. And just so you're aware, folks, if you're joining us halfway through here, uh, we're using the Q&A feature to all panelists to submit our questions. So if you have any, we certainly want to get to those. All right, so the next question we have is what do class schedules tend to look like in first year? Annie, do you mind weighing in on that one for us as well? Yeah, Erin gave us a great rundown of the courses that she experienced in her first year. And it's basically the same for every Bachelor of Music student. Okay. As an incoming cohort, you're all taking music history, music theory, oral skills, which is singing and orally recognizing music. First year students also take a course called music technology, which is really cool. You learn a music notation program called Finale, and you also learn a little bit about audio engineering. Voice students like Aaron take lyric, Diction 1 and 2. Erin, do you want to talk a little bit about what that class is all about? Yeah, so that's unique to voice students. It's basically um, IPA, which is where you actually learn um, how to speak in different languages, but you don't actually, you're not actually learning what you're saying. You're more so learning how to speak the language. So when you see any uh, phrase in a language that you study, you automatically know how to pronounce those correctly. And you will carry those skills out with you throughout the rest of your degree. And if you continue singing afterwards throughout the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Erin. And then that, of course, you do your ensembles as well. So. Aaron was in festival choir. Maybe you were also in chamber choir. You were, yep. Did you do opera workshop as well in your first year? So I decided to just audition for chamber choir and then I did opera as well. Awesome. And instrumentalists, you'll be in wind ensemble or chamber orchestra. You could also be in jazz ensemble. And then of course, your weekly applied lessons. That's what a first year music student deals with. 
Wow, that does sound like a lot. So I'm glad that your students are able to manage all that. And it sounds like there's a lot of supports available to them as long as they reach out. Hey, yeah, for sure. Awesome. All right. So um, the next questions for Aaron, it's about in your first year, is there anything that you wish you had known that you know now that you're a senior student? Hmm. Let me think that I wish I had known. Well, I wish I had um, figured out when I like to practice earlier on in my degree. I thought I'll just wing, not wing it, but I was like, I'll fit that in later. But I really, there is a lot that piles up super quickly. So oftentimes practicing can maybe be tossed to the side. So I realized quickly I couldn't let that happen. So I started going in in the mornings and practicing and getting that done. Um, but again, I would just say try to figure out um, what works best for you. And in terms of um, other things that I wish I had known, I mean, speaking on behalf of some of my other uh, peers, um, they kind of regretted not getting involved um, super early on. And I know that sometimes people say that they want to ease into university and maybe not uh, take advantage of some resource centers or Maybe they don't want to join societies, but I say, what are you waiting for? Those are there to literally help you transition in. And um, why not start off with a bang and get right involved? I mean, obviously you have to balance everything, but know your limits. And I say, get involved right off the bat. Yeah, getting involved is, you can find your niche just so easily once you do it, eh? You find your people and then you're good to go. And that applies to pretty much any degree program. <laughs> Um, so one of our last questions here is about what, um, Karen and Annie, you would like your first student, first year music students to know, if you could let them know one thing, what would that be? Uh, yeah, sure, Annie, <laughs> you can certainly go first. Oh, I would love to hear from Dr. Bulmer first, actually. I'll go after her. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I thought you were raising your hand. <laughs> What we would really like you to know, okay, I'm going to give two things, um, that we are here to help. We are here to, to we are, um, I know it can seem intimidating, profs, all sorts of new people, but we are here to help. We love when you come to our office and ask us a question or send us an email and ask a question. It is not a nuisance. It is not a bother. We, we love to help. And we want to see you succeed. So we're not there trying to weed people out or, you know, we really want to see everybody succeed. So don't hesitate to reach out to us at, at any point. We really love hearing from you. Awesome. Thanks for that. And Annie? Oh, gosh, that's that's just the best possible advice that any student can hear. We do want to hear from you and we love to hear from you. Also, as a as someone who's also graduated with a music degree, I agree with Aaron. Figuring out your schedule as soon as possible is the best thing you can do to prepare yourself to be successful in music school. When do you work best? When do you like to sing or play your instrument? And then get into a habit of doing that on a regular basis. That's fair. It's really individual for everyone. Hey, what that process is going to look like for sure. All right, and I think what our last question here uh, is going to be for Aaron. And it's about organization and um, how you how you organize notes and studying and that kind of thing. Do you have any tips for students to to keep that kind of thing organized for them? Hmm. Well, I know definitely what I realized really quickly is I like to have a copy of my schedule on the back of each of my binders so I find that's super helpful and I have that color coded um in terms of notes each class is going to be different really um you can talk to previous students older students see what they like but it's really just figuring out what works best for you um I like to write down my notes for a lot of history courses but then other courses I like to take notes on my laptop, like it really, really depends. Um, I would say for um, any voice students, I'm not sure if it works the same for instrumentalists, but I know that I always record my lessons 
And then the day after, I might give it a day or two days, and I will go in and I will re-listen to everything and write into my score. So during my lesson, I can be super focused on what my prof is saying. And then afterwards, I'll go in and write my score. So that's uh, music specifically. Um, but yeah, I find maybe writing out notes or on your computer, just really whatever uh, works best for you. And it's going to take a little bit of time to figure that out, but it'll come. It will for sure. All right, so we're nearing the end of our time together today, folks. Do you have any last tips or tricks or final words for our future prospective students here today? I think I'd just like to mention that our deadline to apply for undergraduate students is January 15th. And then please do visit the website. You'll see lots of information under the future students tab, information about what to play on your audition, how to record your audition with a video camera or just with your cell phone, and then how to submit it to us through YouTube. And you'll find all of our professors' emails on our website as well. Echoing what Dr. Bulmer said, they would love to hear from you. Yeah, can I can I just jump on that? That um absolutely if you have questions about audition repertoire or anything like that, um please don't hesitate to to reach out and one of the cool things about being in this remote teaching environment so i had um, a prospective student reach out to me a tuba player the other day and we were emailing back and forth a little bit and i realized oh my goodness all my master classes are are on zoom this term so i invited this person to sit in on one of our our low brass studio classes one week if she would like to do that so um I wouldn't be surprised if other faculty members would be willing to do that as well, or even meet with you over Zoom and hear you play, maybe have a bit of a lesson. So um, absolutely reach out. Awesome. And Erin, any last tips or tricks to share with folks today? Just like I was saying, uh, throw yourself in there, immerse yourself into all the student life. It's going to be great. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much for to each of you for joining us today. And if you have any questions, folks in the audience, um, feel free to send them along to admissions at mun.ca. We can point them in the right direction. And be sure to check out our next session with the School of Social Work on Thursday, November 12th at 4 p.m. Newfoundland time. Thank you once again for joining us and take very good care, folks. Bye now.